Alongside Andrew Gribble, I'm Jason Gibbs. This is the best podcast available. We are brought to you by our great friends at Cross Country Mortgage. We come to you from the Cross Country Mortgage Campus here in Berea. And Gribbs, it's been a few weeks uh, since we last joined the folks, and a lot's happened with this football (laughs) team. What a difference a month makes. A month ago, we were at the NFL Combine. A month ago, we were in a different studio. I mean, we, we've we've shifted locations. I mean, we've done a lot of different stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, just think of where we were at at the combine. We we're like breaking down every single aspect of every top wide receiver in the draft, and think of all the oxygen we spent on Garrett Wilson, on, on Drake London, and then just poof. Not 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 going to be topics of discussion on the best podcast available anymore. No, uh, we definitely transition to uh, to focusing on day two, day three, and we'll get into that because uh, we got to reset what draft picks we do have, and, and we will get to that here coming up uh, in just a few minutes. Also today, uh, the new member of our quarterback room, Jacoby Brissett, had a chance to sit down with my friend Andrew Gribble here. Uh, a great pickup by the Cleveland Browns, and again, another guy, uh, that we'll get into as as we work our way through the transactions of what has been a very, very busy couple weeks here at the Cross Country Mortgage Campus in Berea. But uh, Jacoby Brissett, looking forward to hearing a little bit uh, from him. Uh, and he will have a role on this football team here in 2022. How much of a role? To be determined. And uh, it will be something worth monitoring as we get closer to the football season. That being said... Uh, obviously that quarterback room has changed drastically with Deshaun Watson and with Jacoby Brissett uh, joining the ranks and uh, you know, Case Keenum being traded to Buffalo. And, and we'll see what happens uh, with Baker Mayfield here, uh, who is still under contract with the Cleveland Browns. But the quarterback room has changed. But a lot of other things have changed with this football team as well, Gribbs. Uh, and if we go down the timeline, uh, most recently, obviously, Jacoby Brissett last Friday, uh, but the Deshaun Watson trade. Uh, in addition, uh, Jakeem Grant and Taven Bryant joined the football team. Amari Cooper joined the football team. That feels like it might have been two years ago. No, nope, <laughs> it was literally about two and a half weeks ago. Uh, Chase Winovich has joined the football team. Uh, Chris Hubbard is back. Anthony Walker is back. Uh, and, and we've said goodbye to J.C. Treader and Jarvis Landry. So that being said, let, let's start and, and get your overall thoughts on free agency for the Browns here in 2022. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, as I've talked to people, it's kind of this was a once-in-a-generation type free agency this, situation for the Browns when you make such a bold move at the most important position in the sport. And it, it changes kind of the entire identity of this offense. And I think – everything kind of flows from there with what you're looking at uh, roster wise. We all, I'm sure on CBD, you guys have d- discussed ad nauseum. You know, this is a top five quarterback that that's going to transform uh, the offense. And I think that that's, that's where, where you look at from a football side of this. And then on the same token, this thing really got started with the, the releases of some key veterans clearing up some cast space with J.C. Treader, Jarvis Landry. You throw in Austin Hooper. You throw in Case Keenum there as well. That kind of set you up to kind of have so, some more uh, cap space at your disposal. And then the the Amari Cooper trade really got things going in terms of a transaction move. And that, to me, showed the Browns taking advantage of an opportunity. The, the Cowboys did not have room for Amari Cooper. It had nothing to do with performance. It had everything to do with money. The Browns made it work. They, they bring him in. And he's someone I think that is still in the prime of his career, has a lot of great football ahead of him. And kind of if you get to know Amari Cooper, which I have ever since his freshman year at Alabama, he is fits the whole smart, tough, accountable to a T mindset here. This guy does not say anything. He is the Nick Chubb uh, of wide receivers, uh, a great guy, uh, respected guy around the league, incredible route runner, uh, will be the number one wide receiver on this team barring any unexpected things that happen over here over the next couple months. So that helps you out from a passing game standpoint. And then a lot of these other guys fit some needs as well. You need more pass rushers. Chase Vinovich does that kind of a, a, a the rare player for player trade in the NFL. Uh, but get, you help the Patriots with Mac Wilson. Chase Vinovich helps you out from a pass rusher standpoint. Jakeem Grant, Pro Bowl punt returner. You needed help there. You get some big help there. I mean, that that's a big one. Taven Bryant, 
You need more depth on the de- in the interior of the defensive line. He's a former first round pick that comes here with some upside. And then clearly bringing in Jacoby Brissett kind of caps the the transformation of your your quarterback room and uh, a player that has started and won games in this league uh, and can potentially you, who you may need to help you out this season as well uh, and who would be coming in understanding and ready to do that. And the thing is, the crazy thing is the, the amount of moves the Browns have made here, you can still see plenty of room to still fill some holes here, whether it's going to be through more free agency or these draft picks coming up, especially those those three picks on day two. Those are going to be key pieces to what the Browns do this season. I mean, one month from today, the NFL draft will be over. <laughs> So buckle up for yet another crazy month and a lot of movement, I think, still to come around the National Football League. Uh, When you take a look at at some of these players, Amari Cooper, a couple draft picks, and and you pick up his contract. And, yeah, the the money is a lot, but here's a guy, and it was interesting in talking to Jim Donovan about it. You know, you remember the first time he came here. And – Joe Hayden had a lot of good days as a Cleveland Brown. That day was not a good day for Joe Hayden. <laughs> and Amari Cooper made his mark early, made his presence known, and as a member of the Raiders, uh, had, a, had a monster day. And he's been able to keep up that production. And, you know, I, I've seen some people question, well, is he a number one? Is he a number two? He, he, is, he is an elite wide receiver in the national football well and, and you mentioned the money first off the the money has aged quite well yeah. uh in terms of what's happened in the nfl free agency wise at wide receiver you look at the deal that a guy like christian kirk signed with the jacksonville jaguars and then you look at the big deals that devonta adams and, and tyree kill got i mean that this is a position where the money is going way up and, and now in hindsight it looks like you got kind of a bargain with with this kind of with this kind of player but yeah, I actually talked to Amari about that game. It was his first ever NFL road game because they opened the season with two home games, and that was the first time he remembered everything about that. He, re- he remembered being super excited that he was going up uh, against a guy like Joe Hayden who was in the prime of his career at that point, uh, and he had a great day. I think he had like five catches on the first drive. Uh, yeah. He was marching down the field. He still was upset that they didn't get a touchdown that day. It was eight catches, 134 yards, no touchdowns, though. So it, it, an incredible – guy that that has performed well anytime we've seen him I think the Browns have seen him now three times uh twice with the Raiders once with the Cowboys so uh again someone that's going to help this pa- passing game a lot and it's it's going to be just imperative getting the, the chemistry down with with Watson and Brissett starting it as soon as a couple weeks from now at offseason workouts all right so the big needs for this football team that we've talked about uh at nauseum here for the last few months since the season wrapped up were wide receiver and defensive line help, and you got defensive line help. Taven Bryant, uh, who you mentioned, defensive tackle, interior, former first-round pick uh, on a play-it-and-prove-it type contract. Uh, the things that Andrew Barry uh, and company like to give out to some of those guys you know, that are coming off that first-time contract. So he gets another chance uh, with the Cleveland Browns. But in a, in a trade that I thought was beneficial for both guys, Mac Wilson goes from – here to new to new england and we get chase winovich and you know the defensive end was more of a rotational guy in new england but made his presence known uh, the graduate of the university of michigan and uh i think a change of scenery could probably benefits both those yeah guys. seeing him interact with folks in the building here and just seeing him walk around it seems like he's very excited about this change of scenery and i think again he'll be in a position where we'll see what the browns continue to do uh at the defensive end position, I don't think they're done yet. Uh, I mean, the big one is still out there with Jadavian Clowney. Uh, there's there's still some other options to supplement. Then you obviously can do some work in the draft as well. But certainly someone that's going to be in the mix. And and we all saw, even if you are the the third rotational guy, we saw how big of an impact Tack McKinley had uh, when he was healthy, healthy this past year. It's an important position for this defense and one where they like to get uh, there are three pass rushers on the field at the same time. And I, I think that he can really kind of rejuvenate his career because he, he had five and a half sacks. I think both of his first two seasons dropped off last year. I think there's an opportunity for him to bounce back here. You mentioned Jakeem Grant. Uh, the last time I believe a punt was returned for a touchdown was 15 or 16. Yeah. And I think the last time a kickoff was returned for a touchdown was 2009, 2007. So it's been a long time. <laughs> uh, and, and with Jakeem Grant – it gives you someone in that backfield that 
you have to account for as a special teams coordinator. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's a position that's really kind of evaded the Browns for a long time now. And I think you have to go back to the really good 2015 that Travis Benjamin had where he stabilized that position for, for a year. Since then, it's kind of just been a, a rotating cast. I think this is what you maybe thought JoJo Natson would be a couple years ago, but he came in and got hurt. And then last year he was kind of on and off the practice squad. So he ne- never really got to, to establish his, his niche there. But this is one of the best in the league at the position. Clearly you, you, you get to the Pro Bowl, you're one of the best. And we'll see what else, they, if they can find a way to work him into the offense too. He can do, he can do that sure. as well. But this is a huge area of need for the, for, the, for the Browns. And I thought it was maybe somewhere they were going to go in the draft and get. I'm sure they're going to be looking for that skill set as well. You need multiple options. But this fills a pretty significant need that you had on the team just because you had guys doing it, they were catching it but they weren't you weren't taking it to the level that I think Mike Prefer wanted to this is someone that can even overcome some shortcomings in your in your your blocking and and make some make some plays and and just get you more than the ball back when you're getting the ball punted to you the Browns obviously released J.C. Treader uh Nick Harris is your essentially your lone main center uh now Dunn has given you some snaps. A couple other guys have given you some snaps, obviously, at the center spot. But the Browns went out earlier this week, made a move that it's not going to make the sports center. It's not going to make the front page of ESPN.com. But you go out and you get a center from Seattle and Ethan Posick that has started quite a few games in his young career and a, a guy that brings a lot to the table and just continues to bolster now that offensive line. Yeah, and he's a former second-round pick, and he – played he's played some guard as well so at at the minimum you're bringing in someone that's going to compete and also potentially be your your first or second in in interior uh swing man in in the on the offensive line and i to me that offensive line now looks pretty locked in i mean you've got hubbard back as well he's your swing tackle you've got james hudson as well so that group's pretty covered and i think that's a good thing it's just you want to see all those guys get back healthy but now i think you're you're in pretty good shape i mean obviously you might add a body or two in in the draft but that's one where you might have needed to draft those address those positions early in the draft if you didn't do anything in free agency but now i think the browns are in pretty decent shape just from not just the starters but now your your backups look pretty in line right now so a lot of draft picks have moved back and forth from the browns to a couple teams uh, namely Houston and, of course, Dallas. So right now, uh, our draft pick situation, we won't be drafting on day one, not this year, not next year, <laughs> not the year after that. That doesn't mean we can't move back into the first round, and I think it could totally still be in play if the right player falls into the 20s for this football team to go up and get. But right now you're looking at one second rounder, two in the third, uh, a fourth, a sixth, and two sevenths. Do I have that correct? I believe so. I, I commend your work on this because I even wasn't sure going into this. I, I, I have double and triple checked and still had zero confidence that I got all of this correct. So uh, the first pick that the Browns will make is at pick number 44. And uh, I, I believe they're one of eight teams without a first-round draft pick uh, this year. So, And there could be more before we get to, to April 28th. But, you know, the Browns – We'll have a busy second day. We know that for sure. Second and third round, and then you know one in the fourth, one in the sixth, and then two in the seventh, including the number two pick in the seventh round. Yeah, and it feels like the Browns have had the forty fourth pick for the last four years. <laughs> I, you know, it seems like that's like the the spot they've Was been that picking a in, Orchard in, the, pick? in the second round. I mean, that's the one. It's like, like they've got that. I mean, I feel like that's where like greedy Grant. Uh, JOK. I feel like that's all yep. right in that kind of range. They've either traded up, traded back, but they always seem to land right around that 44 spot. And again, the second round is is where the Browns have you know had a lot of success the last few years. I mean, all the second round picks since 2018 are still on the team, uh, including obviously except uh, Austin Corbett, but you also have Nick Chubb from that 2018 draft. So. I mean, you've had all, you go back, Nick Chubb, Greedy Williams, Grant Delp at JOK. It's it's almost like the Browns have found a way to get good players, and it seems like they seem to get the most like popular player on that day. They they get all these guys who are seemingly former projected first rounders in, in that second round spot. So it's a it's a great spot where the player that you get there, they'll unfortunately probably like Greedy was be kind of treated as if they were a first round pick because they were your first pick in the draft, but. It's someone that's going to come in and compete for a, a significant spot on this team, as we've seen the last few second rounders do that have come in here. So, 
defensive line still, I would say, the, the primary need, uh, both at edge rusher and interior on the defensive tackle uh, spot. Uh, what would be your number two? Is it still wide receiver? I think it is. And I, I think that uh, I still look now at – I look at tight end as well. When you you, sure. you you subtract Austin Hooper, but there's not much – hasn't been any addition at that at that point. So I, I think that's that's another spot where especially with maybe that fourth round pick, potentially that late third round. And then I, you know, this is a crazy thing to say because I don't know if I how I feel philosophically about this, but you, you need kickers and punters on this team right now. <laughs> so I think like that's another one where you're looking at those two seventh rounders, you're looking at that sixth rounder where you're like yeah, I get that this team is – I think the Browns are like one of just a couple teams in the last 10 years to draft multiple kickers, but and they haven't worked out. But then you look at what happened in Cincinnati this past year. It can work out. So it's – it's you can't get tied into one philosophy or not with that. And, you know, there's a there's a punter right now out there that some have speculated is in play at, you know, 44. I mean, like that's – he's this he's that good. So the, those are positions that can't be overlooked because – the, to this point, they've not been addressed in free agency. So I think that it's something you have to keep on your radar going in this draft. All right, so that's where we stand as of the final day in March of 2022. Time now for our player spotlight, and it's quarterback Jacoby Brissett spending a few minutes with our own Andrew Gribble. Have a watch and have a listen. All right, Jacoby, welcome to Cleveland. What's it been like getting to know uh, your new coaches, the GM, everything? What's it been like being on campus today? Thank you. It's been good, you know, going around, seeing all the faces, putting, uh, you know, faces to a lot of the names and voices that I've heard over the phone uh, a couple days and, uh, you know, getting familiar with the building and, and seeing the people at the ins and outs of the building. So it's been good. What drew you to this opportunity? Uh, just that, just opportunity. Uh, uh, and, and that was all I wanted. It was, it was an opportunity and, and uh, you know, this presented the best opportunity for me uh, and you know, I was all over it. And obviously with the signing of Deshaun Watson, you're going to be a key part of that, of that quarterback room. What, what is it that makes you such a, a valuable member to a quarterback room and kind of helping this position grow even better? Uh, I, I like to think it's me as a teammate. Uh, you know, what I bring is that. Uh, I think that's more than enough uh, to, be, to be who I am every day, uh, be a good teammate, good, be a good leader, uh, and, and everything else kind of take care of itself. You've been thrown into a lot of interesting opportunities throughout your career. Kind of, you've had to be ready at, at, at kind of a moment's notice. What, what have you done to prepare yourself for those times? Uh, I think it just started in my mind, just always being ready to go, uh, no matter what the situation was or, or is. Uh, you know, I always like to make sure I'm prepared to, to go out there and put my best foot forward and, and, uh, and do my best. What, what do you have to do behind the scenes to, to get ready like that? Uh, I mean, you always prepare like a starter. Uh, but you know you, you got to take your job serious uh, and understand that it's a you know it's a privilege to be in a position that I am. So to make sure I don't take it for granted, I have to go out there and you know prepare as if I'm the starter. And when my number is called, to go out there and make sure I prove myself right. When you enter a new situation like this, what do you do to kind of get to know your pass catchers and get get kind of on the same page with them? Uh, I think that comes with over time, but also it's just more so just being myself. Uh, you know, I've been playing football for so long. It's kind of you know, every year is kind of the same thing of getting to know players and, and, and getting familiar with each other. So I think just with that, you know, that experience of doing it all my life, I kind of just go in with that mindset of, you know, I, I've done this before. Uh, I'm not trying to go out there and, and be macho or, or to be somebody that I'm not. I just go out there and be myself and, and uh, you know, everything in between kind of take care of itself. I know they haven't told you probably much yet, but what, what can you expect from, from this offense and how it suits what, what you do well? Uh, you know, I think uh, it's very complimentary football, which, which I like to play like, uh, and, and um, you know, have the ability to with good, good runners and pass catchers and, and, you know, a good offensive line to be able to, you know, do a lot of things to put us in the best position for it. You, know, you mentioned the offensive line, one of the best in the league, one of the best running back duos in the league, and now the, the Browns added Amari Cooper. What do you like about those different pieces of the I think it's hard not to like anything about that. Uh, you know, I think you find more things that you would like than what you don't like about, you know, when you put all that on paper. Uh, now it's about just putting it all together, which I'm pretty sure we have the, uh, from speaking to the coaches and the players uh, around, that we have the right people to do that. How important are these next few months for you as a new quarterback on the team with, kind of with, with an offense that could look a little different with new quarterbacks in the building? What, what do you have to do to get ready? Uh, you know, just every day, you know, you just can't miss a day of work, uh, you know, putting put in the, the time with the players and, you know, and myself away from football and, and uh, you know, just making sure that you're, you know, understand what the job is and, and going forward like that. 
You mentioned kind of you pride yourself on being a good teammate. That seems to go all the way back to your days at Florida, NC State. What, what about you has kind of made you embrace that and, and become such a good teammate with these guys? Uh, I think it's just, you know, my respect for the locker room uh, and being in, being in the locker room setting, being on a team, being in a huddle. Uh, you know, those those are things that you kind of kind of last longer than, you know, the football uh, uh, aspect of it. And I, th I think I take that to heart. Uh, and and I, I try to make sure that my teammates understand, you know, how much, you know, uh, you know, I put into to being a good teammate, being in a being a good leader, being in a uh, good guy in the locker room. So, uh, you know, that's kind of like my my first step of meeting a new team is kind of just being that guy in the locker room. And you were nominated for Walter Payton Man of the Year in 2020. What what about the off the field stuff is, is so important? What 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 types of causes do you like to? to uh, I think that's where it starts. You know, I think I was a a, a beneficiary of people doing good work in the community. Uh, you know, I obviously love doing stuff with kids, and you know, I host my bike ride, and I hosted like a fashion show during Halloween time. Uh, but uh, you know, I think that's where it starts at, and uh, you know, I think we have an opportunity to touch you know more people away from football than we do in football. So you know, I definitely like to use my platform to do those things. And when you go into a new city, what's your first step in, in kind of getting to know that city and kind of getting to see where you can help out the most? Uh, I kind of like to like just ride with it for a little bit and then see where I fit in at and then kind of go from there. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, a, a rich town of Cleveland and people doing a lot of good things in the community uh, and uh, obviously seeing some of the things that, you know, these guys have done and what uh, certain players that I've talked to have done throughout their community work here. You know, just excited to be a part of it. And with all the moves this offseason, the Browns, like a lot of AFC teams, have loaded up and, and for a competitive year ahead. How important is, is the winning aspect here and, and kind of what, you can, what you're looking for in this kind of situation? I think that's where, I think that's what everything circles around is winning. Uh, I think that's the most important thing. And, and uh, you know, obviously we're doing the right things to, to, to put that first. So, you know, excited to see what this offseason looks like and, and going forward. Thanks to Jacoby Brissett for a few minutes of his time and getting acclimated here in Berea at the Cross Country Mortgage Campus. And Gribbs, you, you've had a chance to sit down with Amari Cooper. You've had a chance to sit down with Jacoby Brissett, two guys that will that will play a big part in the success uh, of this team, hopefully in 2022. Biggest takeaway from talking with both of them? I mean, well, with Jacoby, I mean, I think the reputation, it speaks for itself. I mean, the guy's a great teammate, and I think he understands fully the role he's coming into here, uh, and he knows he's got to be ready to go. And I think that that's the, the mindset that he's going to take. Uh, going into this opportunity again, a guy that has had success in a lot of different ways uh, at this level, who's been tasked as a full-time starter before uh, with the Colts. And I think he's going to be good f with Deshaun in that room. And I, I think too, you know, he's going to be a leader. I think he's a former Walter Pan man, man of the year uh, candidate. I mean, just the guy, a guy that has everywhere he's gone, players speak so highly of him. And I think that's, that's going to be great to have in the room. And then Amari Cooper, again, hasn't changed since I knew him at Alabama. Uh, no nonsense. This is a guy that's not going to be celebrating touchdowns. I mean, he, this is, he is all about ball. Uh, and I think that, that that's going to fit in very well here. And I think he's got an opportunity to keep building off of uh, the, the, the success he's had in the NFL. I mean, he had what he would probably consider a down year last year, and he would have been by far the leading wide receiver on this team last year. I, I think that his standard is a thousand is the minimum, and I, I think that that's what probably he's going to be shooting for. I think it would be his fifth a thousand yard season if he's able to get it this season. He he's a heck of a player. I, I still remember draft night and how bad we wanted him, and we <laughs> knew we couldn't get to him. Remember the the, the uh, it was the Amari Cooper versus Kevin White debate. Amari, yeah. I think that Amari, didn't work out well for the Bears. Yeah, I think I think Amari's won that. <laughs> Did one. not work out well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> wow, I totally forgot about Kevin White. Yeah. All right. So there's that. Uh, and I think it goes back to what we talked about on Browns Daily. You know, you, you're now putting pieces in place just in case. You know, you, you have quality backups. You know, we talked about Posick, uh, the center coming in, and being too deep on the offensive line. Uh, Dearness Johnson back. You know, every, you, you are building quality depth just in case something were to happen. And, you know. Having, <laughs> Last year it did happen. A yeah. Lot. Yeah, there was a, a lot of times. just in cases that you needed to <laughs> needed to deal with, and even mentioned like the Anthony Walker signing. I thought a lot of us going into the this off season thought that that job was going to be handed to Jacob Phillips. Now you've got some 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 real depth at that that linebacker position. Where now you don't even really need to address it maybe too much in the drafts coming up because you're pretty set at that at that spot. Yeah, I, I definitely think one of the one of the signings that 
maybe not a lot of people talked about here this this off season, but one that will benefit this football team, is, especially from a leadership standpoint and what he brings to the table on that. All right, coming up, uh, we're a month away from the 2022 NFL Draft. You'll be hearing from some more of our new free agent signees as we work our way toward the draft, and we'll start delving in doing our deep dives uh, gribble will probably have us do a rounds five through seven mock <laughs> draft uh coming up uh, in a few weeks but we will get to know these guys because we're going to need to know what uh, come day two day three who are who are the players that the browns could be targeting whether it's on the defensive line whether it's that wide receiver room i believe this guy had us taking on ohio state tight end in his last mock before the world flipped upside down a month ago so a lot to see, a lot to figure out, and a lot to do here uh, before the NFL draft. You can like and subscribe today to the best podcast available wherever you get your podcast. You can also check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Browns. For Jeff McDaniel doing a great job setting up our, our, our new little set here. Uh, for Andrew Gribble, Drew Davidson also with a big part in it. Uh, these real nice. I really like that touch. Uh for Andrew Gribble, I'm Jason Gibbs. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to the best podcast available presented by Cross Country Mortgage. <laughs>